Well, it's good to be back with you again for another short and brief devotion. Today I'm looking at a topic that's pretty interesting, and it's called When Somebody Hurts You Deeply. You know, this topic is is going to shake the way you think. It's it's going to go totally against everything that sounds right and reasonable, and, and you're not going to like what Jesus is about to say when concerning when someone hurts and wounds you deeply. Let's read the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 5. He goes, You have heard that it was said of our ancestors, Do not murder, and whoever murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, everyone who is angry with his brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Whoever insults his brother or sister will be subject to the court. Whoever says you fool would be subject to hell fire. So if you are offering your gift on the altar, first go and be reconciled with your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. Reach a settlement quickly with your adversary while you're on the way with him to the court. Or your adversary will hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer, and you will be thrown into prison. Now, I know what it's like to have someone hurt and wound. You want nothing really to do with that person. Matter of fact, you kind of make sure that you rid yourself of anything that reminds you of that person or is connected to them. But here Jesus, as he's known to do, completely turns our world upside down and reveals how a child of God will handle being hurt and wounded, how forgiveness and reconciliation is done in the kingdom of God, and it is completely opposite, friends, on how we handle things in this world. Many times we sit and we stew about what someone has done to us and, and we wait until they come and ask me for, for forgiveness. <laughs> Matter of fact, many times we, don't, we want them to crawl over glass to ask us forgiveness, to really grovel and humble themselves. And then there's times that we don't even want their forgiveness. Rather, we wish revenge on them. But Jesus stops us in our tracks, and he puts a mirror up. (laughs) And he points that the burden for forgiveness and reconciliation is now really on us. Jesus is saying, listen, stop worshiping while unforgiveness is in your heart. Don't, Don't offer your gift on the altar until you first reconcile with your brother or sister. Stop singing songs on Sunday morning while you're holding something against someone else. Stop playing like you're this wonderful Christian while you do everything in your power to rid yourself of someone that offended and wounded you. Because it is up to the one that is offended to go and tell the person one-on-one, not your friends, not your fellow Christians, but go to that person that has hurt them and wounded them and work it out. Otherwise, you're not going to have the blessing of God on your life. And Jesus brings this out again in Matthew 18. He says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. And if he listens to you, you've gained a brother. Now, there are probably many of you saying, you know, are you kidding me? You want me the offended, to go to the offender and work it out. I'm the one that's hurt. I'm the one that was wounded. They should come to me and ask forgiveness. And I understand that. That's how the world thinks. That's how our nature is. But I'm sorry to tell you, that's not the way it works in the kingdom of God if you truly belong to God. Maybe you don't. Jesus said, in every case, you go and make it right before you even start worshiping God, before you preach a sermon, before you volunteer to help the poor, before you sing songs to Jesus, go and be Jesus to the one that wronged you. It's got to be done quickly too, Jesus said, or else the judge is going to be standing at your door and you will end up living in this prison of unforgiveness misery. 
Something to think about, dear friends. Until next time, may God richly bless you.